Good morning, folks. We've got no less than 10 can't-miss stories today. Big news around the world and world of science as we begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star was exceedingly quiet. Again, no sunspots or solar flares, but a large dark coronal hole is still turning through. The solar wind continued intensifying due to that coronal hole stream impact. The continued intensity rise throughout the day drove additional geomagnetic storm events, but luckily they held at lower levels. So in our long-term earthquake watch, we have been expecting not just another uptick, but another event at magnitude 7 range. This morning we have taken the second magnitude 7 earthquake in a week. One is only expected every 20 days. Luckily it struck the low velocity zone as a blot echo, and this is in fact the long-term uptick we've been waiting for. After going nearly 50 days without a magnitude 7, that's two in a week. So it's official. Part of Australia saw their hottest summer ever, and nobody in the Americas cares at the moment because we're too busy shoveling snow and finding our thermal knickers. This is absurd, and it's going to continue this weekend and into next week. So let's feel better with some pretty pictures. Interesting long-term study of the ENSO variation and contributing factors here excellent stitching together that allows you to revisit powerful El Nino and La Nina events in the recent past, and much related to it. Climate.gov was pumping the coming El Nino for much of 2018, and are now completely dumbfounded as to why it didn't materialize. They do have some cute explanations, but the fact is that solar forcing of ocean heat was flat, cosmic ray cloud production over the Pacific was maximized, and the two couplings left the ENSO positive phase in a weak stupor. So I'm sure you have heard, India and Pakistan are basically at war, and they're nuclear states. But this is a terrific article on how their use of nukes in even such a small area would cause five times more global cooling than old models suggest, and could create global famine due to many ice age. This would be so bad because of the cloud forcing studies Princeton shared in early 2018. We just can't imagine how badly a temperate climate requires clear, sunny days. Are you familiar with Randy Sheckman and Plan S? He is leading a charge to make all science open source. No more paywalls, no more anything. Needless to say, the journals are not pleased. And as the University of California dumps Science Direct, we must demand that they follow the music and movie and book industries, and that the science journals need to find new models of sustainability in this new world. Science should be as accessible as possible. Okay, time to leave the Earth and head out to Mars, where the underground basins and surface flows are indicating a global presence of water on the red planet. We already know that layers of ice and red dust are laying upon the surface, but huge basins have filled with water deeper underground. Going next to the galactic scale, and finding that most of our models of gas and dust and star formation rates are contrasting. They are saying that plasma turbulence and galactic dynamics, those would be the magnetic fields in motion, are truly what is controlling over the stellar nursery, birth, and evolution picture. Pretty cool little piece here describing how a stellar flyby saved a planet before the outermost planet here could swing in too close and slingshot out of the system. A binary flyby appears to have sideswiped the system, pushed that planet out further, allowing it to maintain its orbit and fail to escape the system. Jumping back to the galactic level, We've got a terrific look by Chandra at the bubbles of an active galactic nucleus. Optical light on top of x-ray showing the lobes or galactic bubbles from the center. Last but not least, a demonstration of how little they understand nova events, specifically describing classical and recurrent nova, the carbon-oxygen variety. They say is produced when the nova reaches down into the stellar core to bring out heavy elements. Meanwhile, this does not destroy the star or prevent it from having those elements around for the next burst. In reality, it's elemental production by the event itself. No magic hand reaching into the core needed. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.